Can you imagine life without a voice, life without singing, without voice production? Anytime you turn on the TV, it would be mute. Even as a pianist, I find that the vocal arts are very important. My piano teachers used to tell me, sing at the piano. Arthur Rubinstein had a phrase, I learned how to play the piano from the great singers of my time. I did a little bit of research, and one of my favorite composers, Frederick Chopin, had said, the fingers must do the singing, and if you wish to play the piano, you must learn how to sing. And I find that I'm using exactly the same words to my students. There are so many similarities between piano technique, what you have to do to get a beautiful sound, support, relaxation, using the wrist for breathing, and using music as a language, the same as you do for voice. I had an advantage. I married an opera singer, Louis Quillico, and he's been giving me little hints and told me to be master of my own body, use your brains, and he established nine laws of singing. And I will give the floor to him. The first law was how to stand on your feet and why is it important to do so? Well, let's, let's put it this way. When you build a house, you start from the ground up. And the voice is exactly the same thing. This is the big problem with singers in general. They've learned one thing. You make a sound, huh. But what is, what create that sound? What is the thing that is imperative for it? And this is the thing. If you, for instance, you don't know how to stand, and I'm sorry to say it, uh, for instance, I said I saw the, 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 the three tenor, and I could watch, I watched even the way they were standing. And uh, their, their feet have, because you have to find a certain buoyancy. And if you don't have, uh, flexibility in your feet. Another thing, it, it's not only the buoyancy, but I will show you what I mean by this. Now, for instance, if I stand in my two feet, now my whole body is completely, uh, uh, there's a tension from my head to toe. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Now, what, just watch the top of my thorax here. You will notice one thing. The moment I, I move, automatically the old tensions disappear. That means you have to take away the tension from up here to be able to transport it somewhere. Where do you transport? You transport it on the leg that you're standing on. Now the thing is, it's very important, this leg that you are standing on you're not only standing on the, on the leg, you are really standing on the ball of the feet. That means that gives you your buoyancy you want. If you are on the heel, there's no buoyancy. You have to feel, more or less, there's another thing that is very imperative for that, is that you have to feel like a boxer. A boxer is never with his heel in the back, you know, boom. You see, so once in a while you see a boxer that stands that way. But in general, you, you see the boxer standing in certain way to have completely buoyancy of his body. And this is, for me, the most important thing. You change leg that you are on this leg. You go back, there, relaxation. Or I go back, you notice that tension come up. Now I'm gonna move the other leg. Back, there it is. But always on the ball of the feet always on the ball of the feet. There's one thing about our voice that we never understood, that 95% of the people don't understand, that we are exactly like a violin. We have two chords, and we have the air, that is the bow. Now what is the most important thing? Is it the bow or the air? Give me an answer on this. The bow or the air, the, the, the bow is the air. The air, yes. The bow is more important. No, it's the opposite. The chords are the one that dictate the exactly. Vibrate. Exactly, because what, what is happening? If you give me too much hair on the chord, it'll vibrate. Yeah. The violin, what, what do you think, you, you, when you see a great violin, you see him, he's got practically nothing that holds here. Yeah. Right? There's, that's very flexible for him. Then on top of that, the, the, on top of that, 
see him, the way he takes the ball, the way he puts it on the... Mm. Uh, uh, the other day I was looking at a, a concert and it was so amazing the way he would deposit his ball on the chord. And I says, my God, if Singer could understand vision, what is the connection between your chord, your air, the chord of the violin, the, the, the bow of the violin, it's exactly the same thing, you know? For instance, when they, when they play, they don't do like this. They go like this. Now, there's a lot of air between the bow and the chords. Us, it's exactly the same thing. It's to be able to translate into your mind that to give an opening for the air to come, then get back together, and then the air comes out. And the moment it touch, it touch your chord, it does exactly like you if you try to touch your eyes. Yep. And automatically, the air doesn't keep on pushing. No, the, the chord says, stop. And this is, this is, now we're gonna talk about the breathing after and all that. What next? The next thing, since we're talking about the body, being master of the body and controlling the body, yes. and talking about the violin rather than the bow, which is important. Yeah. Okay. Support. Can you tell us how you get support for a singer? Uh, can you explain to me what you feel about the support yourself? Well, I take a breath in. There's a lot of things of what you would Ex sing. Explain me, yes. Okay. Okay, I take a breath in. It's very important the way I'm standing. I feel that, that the support is almost coming through the ground as much as anything. Take a breath in, it, it engages, the breath comes out, and, and the voice just floats on it, as, as in a... I'm gonna tell you one thing. You're complicating the thing too much. Because your body, just feel your body, what is your body? And you know that the, 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 the functioning of uh, the support is a very simple thing. It's the same thing as the chuck absorber on a car. What is the chuck absorber does to the car? Stabilize yep. all the time. What do you think? The support is exactly the same thing. Just stabilizing breath. Now put your hand on my hand. Okay, now press. Yep. This is what we usually do. Now press, slowly. Yeah. And that's what it does. And all of a sudden, it comes to the point where the voice will start to go in motion. All of a sudden, it stops there, the yep. air stops. Yep. There's no more pressure on the air. And that is the thing. We always figured that, for me, it's the, the motion of it. Because the thing is, it's not to try to say, uh, it's the tonsil, it's this, it's that. The, the motion, to try to feel, it goes down. And they, it's a membrane that really yeah. goes down. Like for instance, the big problem is, if you keep, like a lot of people talk about the sport, you pull in, that's a sport. What do you do? You can How do you breathe with this? Well, you Finish. can't, yeah. That's it, you have to be free, and that is the freedom. For instance, your yeah. lung have, cannot, cannot go up, cannot go back, because you got the, the you got the, the, the what do you call the uh, ribs, the ribs, yeah. and you got the, the shoulder and everything. Yeah. What is the functioning of the? It's go down, uh, give drops. space, yeah. give space forward, ba back uh, backward and maybe a little bit, yeah. but down especially. Yeah. And that is the thing that very often singers don't understand that they think that they they fill in by. <laughs> no, it's the opposite. You rise a very very capricious. You practically cannot touch them. The air does exactly the same thing with your lungs. If by a mistake of your mind that you do, you're stopping the air. Because what is happening, this is what happened. Not oh. only, not, it's not exactly the lungs that will stop, but the cord will stop you. And uh, uh, you put, an, uh, you put you put an obstruction. And how do you fight that obstruction? Only one way. Eliminate it. And that's it. 
la tuo figlio a te concedo rivedere nell'ombra nel silenzio la This note is not good for a simple reason. When I started the aria, I was singing too much for myself. And it lasted to, practically till the end of the aria, I have to say. And the, it's a simple thing. I could not open my throat enough because I was trying to too much to try to think of technique and all that. And that's very bad. You know, even, even good singers sometimes uh, take habit. The fourth law is how to open your throat. Good. You see, the thing is that, that, that most of the singers don't know that you have to open your throat when you sing. There's a lot of people. Some of them, they know. Some of them, they're doing it without even thinking, no. and it's there, OK? Now, very simple thing. This is a muscle, OK? Now, watch what happens. Now, I didn't do this with the air. Now, watch what happens if I do a sound close. Uh, uh. But if I open it, uh. the point is, by opening the throat, you become in control not only of the opening of the throat, it creates the, your tension that you're looking for the chord. Okay. Just try to understand one thing that is very simple. I can't, you, you know, I'm jumping maybe or all, all that stuff, but this is your throat. It's very simple. This is your chord. Now they're like this, huh? Now all of a sudden, you're opening up the, the larynx. You see what happened to your chord? There it is. And already, 50% is done for you. But if a person doesn't know how to open up their throat, and I'm sorry to say it, no matter who you are, and no matter who is the singer, and bring me Mr. Pavarotti, bring me Mr. Placido Domingo right here in front of me, and they will not deny this. It is not possible. That's why they became great singer like they are, because they discovered this opening. Nemico della patria Bad habit in this is that at certain moment you will notice that the voice open and close on me and there is nothing I can do about it. My mind doesn't seem to be able to control You see, like tradito, that, that is completely closed. And it says, this is not dignified of stating that it's a good note for that reason. Like this one, costume, that's wide open, and that is not good at all. I don't vocalize before I sing. But I don't vocalize, but I do something else. It's like uh, she has to play the piano, huh? Us, we have to sing. Now, just think to open your throat. Now, what, you, what are you doing? You're doing this to the, to the chord. And that's what's important. Like they, they say, you know, a violin has to play. The violin has to play the violin during the day, why? So for the violin, the violin doesn't have to be warmed up. Like the piano is there. The pianist comes in, yes, sometimes very often they will tune because the piano goes out of tune. But a violin is going, is going to tune his violin just before. But he doesn't play the He could take any violin and play with it and then do a concert with another violin. The violin doesn't have to be warmed up. I have to say that my feeling is ourselves 
mind over matter will give you exactly what you want. As you might notice, I started out of pitch. That is a very simple reason for that. I was not ready to start the concert. We had little problem, and that, that is the, the reason. Another thing, the throat was not enough open. All during the aria, practically. Right now, you see, I'm getting back to pitch. Now something is starting to function again. All of a sudden, my mind says, start. What I'm saying right now, there's a lot of teacher that's going to criticize this. But I don't, I don't care, because I made my career on this. It's the day I discovered how to open my throat. And I've, I'm going to tell you one thing. I had to work very hard. I, I had signed a contract with an opera company, and I knew I could not fulfill my, my part, because I was not ready vocally. And all of a sudden, I said, I got six months. And without teacher, without nobody, I said, I'm going to discover what is the voice. Before we go on to the breathing, are there any questions? I do have one. Um, you mentioned that you, you spent about six months in front of a wall until you finally found the right, the proper sound. Um, in the light of that, basically what you're saying is that one can go to as many lessons as they want. If they're not willing to take responsibility for their body, it won't happen. This is a beautiful answer. Because that's the thing I always say to the pupil. The real mm -hmm. teacher is not me. It's not the teacher you have in front of you. It's yourself. You know, it, it's like a, a doctor who wants to become a doctor. He has to learn by himself how to cut. And that w us singers, we expect our teacher, after 50 years, is going to be there holding us by the hand. On the stage. Say, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't realize how alone you are. <laughs> but that's the point, you know, because yeah. the thing is, just try to realize one thing. To learn how to sing, it's exactly like when you go on a walk on that stage. Nobody is there to help you. Everything is done by yourself. It's a very lonely life, I would say. Yeah. But it's a marvelous life. So but in a way, you, if, if, if it doesn't work, there's no use in blaming the teacher. You just did not do your part of the I would the go work. as far as to say that I think there is more bad pupil than teacher. Yeah or bad singers, call it the way you want it. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the thing is, there's one thing that you have to learn. I, I think it's a good thing that I, I should say it now. Don't get accustomed to your sound. Because the moment you, step, you start to get accustomed to your sound, automatically, that is the sound you want to do. And you know how many times I saw pupil giving me that that is the sound they want to hear. And I said, no, it is not possible. I said, maybe the sound that you don't want to hear, that you want to be part, not part of it, it's the right sound. I said, how are you going to do? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't think I want to sing. I said, good, give up. <laughs> That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, getting back to the sound, uh, there's one thing that you always. Well, even before the breath, since we were talking about the sound, the head position, because the larynx oh, collapses. <laughs> I've been a good pupil. <laughs> my conscience, my conscience. The thing is <coughs> that I have to say, you have to be very careful. The head has to be in a, exactly in the right position. And do me a favor, buy the last tape that the three tenor did, because that is a hell of a good lesson. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. When you look at Placido Domingo, you look at Luciano Pavarotti, Carreras, I would say maybe he was trying to use maybe certain things. But look at these two great monsters. I call them monsters. They know how to sing. Just watch what they're doing with their head. You're going to notice one thing. The head never moves. Yeah. And that is a very simple thing. Because these two little chords are larynx. Maybe the larynx, let's say the larynx is long like this. You cannot make it long like this. Right. 
And you have a lot of people, that's what they do. They either sing, <coughs> or they sing, ah. And I'm going to give you a simple example. Now, if you listen very carefully, don't sing, but just listen carefully. You're going to hear when I take the breath. Now, I'm going to bring the head down. I try to open the throat, the throat. There's nothing I can do. Now, I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go up. There's nothing I can do. But now it's normal. Now watch it again. You see, you move your head. I would say you move your head about maybe a sixteen, uh, an eighth of an inch. You're off of the. I call it the socket. That is the danger. You have to be exactly right on the socket. And watch Pavarotti singing. Watch yeah. uh, Flaccio singing. It's exactly the same thing. If they're a little bit tired, sometimes they might raise the, vo the, the head like that to maybe to, to stop the voice going. But that, that could be dangerous. But they don't do it. They, they know what they have to do vocally. I'm not criticizing the way they, they do the, 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 the singing. No. It's the opposite. They know what to do. And that, these are the people, for young singers, it's to watch. For you, what is the uh, resonance? Tell me. What is the resonance? My whole body, my head. Well, I'd, I say that obviously the, the sound is made there, and then it, it, it has to be resonated into somewhere, and that is up to you where it goes, if you can have some type of opening for it to that go. That is not bad, but the real resonance of of your uh, of your voice is the chord because you take up the tension of the chord you've got no resonance you know they always yeah. say put it yeah. in the resonance put it in the resonance you know what I mean you know no that's where it goes down after it's produced that's right yeah that's but uh, for instance I'm just going to show you now I'm going to loosen the voice uh, the, the the chord huh? uh, 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 uh. There's, there's no resonance but if I tens tension the chord, I will give you. Uh, uh, that's nothing with the resonance. The resonance is a cavity. Yeah. Now I'm coming to the resonance after this. But the, the real, the real so. production of the resonance, it's thanks to the chord. It's the chord that makes it. That's why you have to be very careful, because a lot of singers, they think, oh, well, You've got a big voice. You've got to make a big voice. No. Well produce the voice. Look at the violin. The violin is not a big instrument, but it still makes a good sound. What or how does it make it sound? Because it's got its cavity, but it's it's not that he's pushing in the in it. No. It's only the vibration of the chord and the, the bow. That's all it is. Through a piece, the, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, bridge. The bridge. Yeah. Through the bridge, it <coughs> gives that vibration on the rest of the violin. But the violin himself, it is not. It, it 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 creates the sound, yes, but it's done from ear, communicating to this bridge and to the bridge to the violin. That's why the resonance of the violin is. That is done by the chord. That's why you, you've got a good violinist that's going to play the violin. All of a sudden, you're going to hear a sound like you say, my god, I don't know where is that sound come from. How does he make that sound? He's got his own way to do it. And maybe his way to do it is by less pressure on his bow, as least as possible, but to have more vibration from it. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is where the, the great artists become <laughs> great because they discover things that other people, they expect a teacher to give it to them, but they don't want to go and search for it. Mm -hmm. I have to say that I became, I came back to a little bit to my own self at this moment of the evening, 
And you will hear the credo. The credo is already in a much better spirit. If you notice the the the, the interpretation, not only the interpretation, but the vocal approach is very much what it should be. There's not opening, closing, opening, closing. And you see, that that is what is singing about. You promised to tell me the story about breathing, having the little pipe between the two front teeth. Well, uh, before, you remember when I, sa I asked you about, say yes. Well, if you really understood the meaning of how you take the air and you say the yes, when I, once upon a time, I was thinking, like uh, it brought me to this, uh, I had a funny feeling that I had a little pipe just between my teeth here. And when I would take the air, I would shoot the air out. Never take the air. Now, oh, I shoot yeah. the air out. And what is happening by shooting the air out? Oh, I feel it right away. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a funny thing, you know? Yeah. Yes. More or less, you shoot the air out, the voice is here. The voice, the vo this is the voice. You shoot the air out. The air catch the voice and goes with it. Yes, yes. I come back to what we said before, a rotation. Yes. And one of the most important thing, the most marvelous thing that was invented in this world is the wheel. And the voice is exactly like the wheel. Follow the, the motion of the wheel. Not the, the wheel, if you back up the car, it's one thing. But if you go forward, you know, think about it. This is the motion of the, of. Now, usually at 95 to 97% of the singers, when they take the air, they go, now they suck the air. Or they swallow it? Yes. They suck, I call, yeah. I call it suck. Okay. But if they swallow the air, it goes, if I make a grosso motto, you know? Now what is happening with this? It's going in and then it has to stop. And then and it goes then back How does it stop? It, it reaches the end. Uh, no, 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 no. It stops one way. Yeah, that way. Now take the air, hold it. What stops it? Here. Ah. Uh, it's your cord. Because when you, when you said this thing, and, and I'm telling you, I, I did that, and this, I didn't feel the tension I, that I just felt there. I know, but I'm, ta I'm talking about the way they would breathe, <laughs> usually. What is happening? This is what is happening. They, they breathe. Yeah, it shuts yeah. Now, they want to sing. <laughs> and you have a lot of people sing that way. That doesn't do it. It cannot do it. Yeah, it doesn't. Yes. And that, I call this the rotation. Instead of taking the air, the rotation of the air this way. Now, when you take the rotation of the air this way, this is what they have to do. And they have to push. Now, if you do the opposite, you go with the rotation. Now, watch what happens. Uh, Ah, uh, nothing stops. Ah, uh, yes, yes, it's exactly yeah. the same thing. That little word, yes, feel what it does to you. I assume it, then you, nev you never have, like sometimes we sing, and if we do that, if we have a very, very short time to breathe, it's just not possible, but I assume that if you oh, go yes. like that, oh, you always... Oh, hey, I'll, I'll do this it's way. Just, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so right. You, if you, you, you can, like, you do. You know, it's, it's not possible the other cut. way. If you have Absolutely. a long run, you can yeah. cut without it very sh yeah. showing a lot. And if you have to breathe like that, you'll have a big. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Now, the, the breathing is very important in, in the singing. It's to create, to, to take up the tension. And my feeling of me, everybody can think the way they want, but for me, my feeling of it, look very carefully at the rotation. This is the rotation, huh? This is the rotation. Now, what happens when I breathe? This is my cord, okay? Now, this is what I feel. Actually feel, huh? Watch what happens. Yeah. Now, what happened here? The air goes in. The air goes in. But if this stays... Yeah. Do it the way you want it. The friction here. And the moment that the, the air finished coming in, the cord does. Now, what is happening? That won't come out. Oh, then like some feel tenors sore after a while, too. A lot of singers, I have to say. <laughs> But when you hear people like uh, Placido Domingo and uh, Luciano Pavarotti, I have to say one thing. You watch that, you listen to it, you say to yourself, how they do it, that's what they do. I have to, say, I have to tell you that I've searched, and I really searched, and I came out with the, dedu the deduction that is the only way to do it. And anybody will tell me the contrary, I, I don't care a hoot, because me, it's only for 40, 45, well, if I count with my younger years, it's uh, exactly about 60, 63 years now that I've been singing. And uh, the voice is still there. I, did, I just finished to sing at the Met, no? I just <laughs> finished to do Tosca at the Met. I just did a few concerts with my wife. And I'm going back to uh, the Metropolitan to do Pagliacci in the fall. Then I go to Israel to do the, the Barber Seville, and, and so on and so on. 